Hey, what is up guys? It's me, Ava, back at it again with another video. And today I have an Urban Outfitters art decor tutorial for you. So for this first tutorial, you're gonna need a paint palette, brushes, water, and a little sheet and some watercolors and watercolor paper. It's thicker than other paper and then tape and a bowl and some snacks because everything's better with snacks. So first you're going to tape down your thick watercolor paper on your table so that the paints when you apply the water on it, it doesn't rise up and get all gross and weird. And this is also going to leave a border on the side of your paper. And since the tape is the same size, try to get your borders even because all of the Urban Outfitters art prints have the similar border. I think it's about half an inch, but I just went with whatever my tape had. Then put your bowl in the center of your paper and just trace around it with a pencil. The bowl should be a similar size to mine, but you can look online at reference, reference pictures of the artwork that you want to make and just judge based off of the size of your paper compared to the size of your bowl. So then you just slide your bowl over after you line it up on the center, you slide it over to the side and it'll make a little perfect crescent shape in it. I made mine a little bit too thin, so I would suggest doing it more and then you just trace that too. So now you're gonna need crimson, red, black, and white watercolors. Also a gel pen for later, which I forgot to put in the beginning. So take a small bit of black, I did way too much, but you're gonna need the black later anyway, so it doesn't really matter. A tiny bit of crimson red and white. You can use any type of watercolors, but I prefer to use these type, the um, tube types, but you can also use pans and you can also use um, pencils, but I think this gave me the best results. I think a pan would also be good, but I'm not sure how well pencils would turn out here. So I guess to each their own, but. So here I just did mostly white with a slight, slight amount of pink in it. So you can see it becomes this pale pink base. And then I'm adding just a teeny bit of black and you can see a little goes a really, really long way here. So just to mix it all together thoroughly, but with water, it doesn't, watercolor, it doesn't matter as much how well you mix it. And then add in some water because this purpley warm color is supposed to be really, really kind of transparent. If you look at the artwork, there's lots of like areas where it's lighter and um, kind of patchy. So then I just did a color test on my extra piece of paper and it still needed to be a warmer tone. So I added a little bit more of the crimson color to warm it up a little bit. I still wish I would have done a, it a little bit warmer, but I wish it wasn't as purple as it was in the end. It still looks good though. And then I added more water. I would also suggest getting clean water because I think that might've affected my paint, but I had been painting all day today and I was kind of lazy, even though this was my first DIY. So now I'm just taking a brush, although you should probably use a bigger one, I'm lazy. And I'm just applying the color all over my whole entire area around the circle shape. And then uh, it looked too streaky to me, so I'm just taking water on my brush and just kind of dispersing the pigment so that it's a little bit more solid and less streaky because you do want patterns on it of darkness and lightness, but you don't want brush streaks. And then I just took black and put a bunch, a bunch of water in it because the black in her artwork is also very, um, has lots of splotches in it, I guess you would say. So I just took a lot of water in black and put it there. And if you mess up, you can just take a paper towel and it will soak up the water and also the pigment. So that's one of the good things about watercolor. If you make a mistake, it doesn't really matter. And then I finished and I just went back in and took a paper towel and picked up some of the color too in areas to make it splotchier. Then I pulled up the tape and now I'm just taking my gel pen and using her photo as a reference. I'm just putting in 
lots of little white dots to represent the stars. As you can see, my crescent ended up being a lot thinner than I would have wanted it to be, but it still looks pretty dang good in the end if you ask me. So here's the actual um, piece of art from Urban, and then here's our second piece of artwork that I did. So start, we're using acrylic paints for this one. So I started with a huge base of a lot, a lot of white paint, and then I added two little drops of pink and a lot of drops of crimson yellow. Or just, oh, actually this one, I only used a tad bit of crimson yellow and then even smaller amount of brown. And then I mix it all in to this kind of tan color because at first I thought that it was just a white background, but it's kind of a creamy tan. And then I just made sure to coat the whole paper evenly, also painting, taping this one down. And I used the same watercolor paper just because I liked the thickness of it and it felt a lot more solid. Now take your citrus yellow again and mix in some brown to make it a more goldeny yellow color, like that. And then you're going to take it and just make little circles all over the paper. You can use his artwork as a reference also, which I did because I just wanted to do that, although I changed some things. So I just, you go in and you just fill it in with the color. You should have three rows of five. And leave a little space at the bottom because you're going to put writing there. And then I just took a pen, although I would suggest going in with pencil first because mine ended up slanting upwards. And in it, you're just gonna write faces I know and I tried to copy his handwriting. And then in all of the little dots, you're going to make fun little faces with a black pen. And I also used a photo reference of his art for this. And there it is. And then this next one is my last piece of actual artwork that I did. Tape a paper down again, but cover up like the bottom, maybe say fourth of the paper. To, this is supposed to be like the color swatches and then take a bunch of white and add a small, small amount of pink. In the end, my pink still ended up being way too much, but um, it still looks good, so it's no big deal, but just be aware of that. And then cover the whole thing up, and then after it dries, you can pull off all your tape. So now we have just the pink area and I traced out the lettering in a pencil. It just says petal pink and then here's the original Urban Outfitters artwork. This last piece is um, supposed to be imitating like hammered metal and the Urban Outfitters one is actually gold but I don't know how to do gold tin foil. So here just take a small snack sized bowl and trace out circles and then cut them out. I ended up with 13, which was a few too many, but if you make mistakes, then this is just going to be extras for you. So take one of your circles and set it aside. This is going to be the full moon. And then using the same technique as before, make a bunch of crescents using, a, I used a photo reference to make a cycle of the moon. So then take these papers and stick them down onto a sheet of tin foil, and then you're going to cut the tin foil as close as possible to your paper stencil. And then the back will still be paper, so take another sheet of tin foil and cut it larger so that you can fold it over, and then make some salt dough. And then you're gonna glue the paper down onto the tin foil and then you're gonna do salt dough over, and then you're gonna fold the tin foil over and then do salt dough over top of the paper. And then you're gonna take the other piece of tin foil and you're going to glue that down on top of it. And then you're just gonna put twine on the back of it with glue. And then you're gonna attach all it in the order that you want and then that'll be it. But my camera cut out here, like towards the end of this before I could show the twine and stuff. So I don't know why that happened. My camera was just being weird, but you're just basically gonna attach it to twine and make it diagonal and uneven. And it ended up super duper pretty. Also make sure to press down on the tin foil to make it look hammered. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Stay wild, flower child.